Hello, am I audible? Good morning, everybody.
20 lakh here minimum many are here for several mega millennium like uh, in your bathroom and your kitchen the that that very tiny organism that used to flicker cockroach he was older than the dinosaur he was there on the planet while dinosaur was there but he is still surviving but we cannot say about the human being will i am going to uh, explore why this happened and what are the special feature that human being has that is uh, that that leads to the present condition where we are only culprit only destroyer on this planet among millions of the different species present on earth so this environment day is a mark to celebrate it was the first conceived it one of the very prestigious event happened in 1972 that is known as a stockholm conference and in fact in the environmental history or awareness history when the human being realized the importance of the nature and earth it was the one of the landmark event that initiated the the all the the awareness campaign and activities debate discourse research study education on the environment and nature so that we realize the importance of the nature so it was a stockholm conference 1972 where this idea of celebrating environment day conceived there and the first earth day was celebrated with a very catchy topic very catchy topic only one earth it means whatever our need human being need requirement desire dreams it should be covered within the resources available on the earth so that was very catchy the first earth day only one earth although universe has unlimited number of stars galaxies and numerous earth like structure but life only at earth till current understanding there may be some earth some far 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 away life is there but we don't know we have no trace about it only earth has and earth has a planetary boundary where human being has to see the dream make it realize and lift resources so that their future generation also dream and make realize their dreams so this is the very basic knowledge that everybody should understand there is always confusion among the human being particularly i am talking about human being that the earth is a very 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 huge planet if you think individually that you, you are just a tiniest minuscule drop on the earth so if we should look for the nature look for the earth we will find it will a giant planet unlimited resources it has at the same time there is another confusion the first one was the confusion that earth has unlimited resources if you think individually socially or as a community human being earth has a unlimited resources this was the first misconception we had second misconception that we carry along since millennia since the advent of the human being that it has unlimited capacity to absorb the waste that we generate so nature it has unlimited resources that fulfill our unlimited dreams and earth has unlimited capacity to assimilate or take care of the waste the pollution that we generate these two misconceptions we carried and we go for one of the very vital turning point in the human history that is called industrial revolution so but in reality now it was realized and what why that's why i said in 1972 the stockholm conference it was the realization platform that we realized several thing but never accepted so we realized that time in 70s that earth resources is limited whether it is coal whether it is petroleum whether it is a forest resources whether it is a oxygen that we are drawing from the nature uh, atmosphere 
everything has a limit it has a planetary boundary because there is no other earth where we can exchange or borrow the material if it falls out whether it is water whether it is the soil whether it is land area whether it is the ocean the depth of ocean the resources of ocean it always has a limitations and second thing earth has not unlimited capacity to take care of the waste that we generate i hope the audience is agree with me that these two fact are reality everyone realize this that earth has no capacity to provide resources unlim at unlimited extent and second earth has no capacity to take care of what we generate this is the very practical we can experience from your day to day understanding suppose in the west bengal the culture of uh, palm uh, fish farming at a in this at a family level or a village level what will happen if you supply it more fishes than we catch them there will be a second example so the resources are limited that let's understand this second second is the earth has lim limited capacity to take care of our waste an example very good example although many of you are there in delhi may not be but they all heard the story of the river jamuna jamuna is in now over here river has a natural capacity to degrade the waste if you go to the ganga down stream people dump their waste but river take care of it after in few kilometer it became again the fresh although the entire stretch is contaminated but nature river has natural purifying capacity but jamuna come to the jamuna we, we we make the river dirtiest i mean the possible extent so with these two limitations with those two two limitations the different problem has just started emerging and the first problem where that in that that bring attention of the global community i'm not talking about one individual country and the global community in 50s long back 50s is the air pollution different cities of the world I mean, they, they what india is the at present condition europe faces the kind of in revolution industrial revolution in 1930s <coughs> sorry <coughs> uh my request to organizer that i am audible can anybody confirm it hello oh i can say avishek pandey is saying yes you are audible okay so oh, otherwise yes. yes. uh, otherwise uh, maybe a connection will lost and i continue maybe a connection will lost and i continue so thank you thank you very much thank you very much so thank you and thank you very much so you are audible sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and another request some another request is that when there is a lost in the connection please wait for few seconds so that i can connect uh, through other uh, source of internet okay so please bear with this because the these are the some of the problem that is facing the internet connectivity nowadays <clears throat> so the with these planetary boundary the first thing that we encounter is the air pollution so the 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 famous london smog is a very good example in 1950s and 52 or something before that there is a mining episode happened in united states and that bring attention second episode was the thames the river thames the all the industrial dump were dumped over there and the water becomes so dirty that there is a famous saying in the in, in the london at that point particular time if you put your hand don't sure that you are going to back your hand again because it is so toxic that it might degrade your i mean the skin and other so that was the scene in 50s and thereafter several episode has been taken the people come up with different kind of their understanding with the human nature relationship 
and uh, like the, uh, the the very famous book the uh, the silent spring although many of you were not aware about it but uh, my request is to try to search it out you will find very interesting uh, analogy from that the silent spring and the the, the sierra club is one of the uh, very uh, they come up with the uh, limits to growth and there are several episode has been, I mean, people bring out their attention, world attention. And the first time this 1972 happened, the Stockholm conference, where we realize, we accepted that the our man and nature relationship is disturbed. Climate is changing. First time, 1972. And as the human nature is, first we ignore. We close our eyes so that, oh, no, 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 there is no climate change. Or if the climate change is there, or if the environment is getting degraded, it is because of the natural cause. Human beings have nothing to do with it. The earth is so huge that there's just London smoke and just, uh, I mean, the vanishing some honeybee from a particular farm is not going to affect. So, no, 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 it is just, I mean, the natural causes. Climate change is the natural cause, not the human being is responsible for that. And it took. 40 year in 2012 first time although unofficially scientists work given their report common understanding the intelligence intelligence started talking about it the role of human being in disturbing the balance fine balance between the man and the nature but if it took 40 year to accept publicly that our climate is changing because of the human activity. So this is the, 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 the typical human character. First we ignore, and then the, the water is above the head, then we accept, okay, maybe human being is responsible. So in the fourth report, I think United Nations report that we accepted in 2012 that climate is changing, human, my uh, our nature relationship is getting disturbed. The fine balance that we had for the since millennia is getting disturbed because of the human being. So this this with forty year. So this is the typical approach now. So today, so this is the background why we celebrate Earth Day, and from there the several moments and the has come up. The Agenda Twenty One is one of the very fundamental paper that define the 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 present context how to how how our development plan should be so then millennium development goal comes into be and the definition of uh, sustainable development come into being so and uh, you all know the it is a very butch word now the sustainable development i mean so there is a uh, many many uh, montreal protocol is there proto protocol is there we talk about ozone depletion and then came 1992 where the rio de Janeiro summit has taken place the after 20 year of the Stockholm conference and there are two the from 1972 to 2012 it is an era of awareness at the policy level several policies like the United States first time the environmental protection agency came I mean the water act air act similarly India is one of the forefront in the legislation that come up uh, Environmental Protection Act, uh, uh, several and biodiversity, uh, many, particularly the, during the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi era, lot of legislation had come into being. So, so 1992 and the, the, from 1972 to 2012, from a Stockholm to Rio conference, Rio de Janeiro conference that is called Earth Summit, 20 year is the policy perspective we work on and make policy different policies and understanding concepts has been came up sustainable development and one of the fruit of that 20 year discussions and thereafter after 1992 it is the era of protocol where we sit together and discuss what to do policy is not going to enough what to do Although we failed, all the protocols and treaties is not binding because it is intergovernmental. Two countries are there, so is going to regulate. But although we partial success, and one of the one of the only one international treaty, environmental treaty that given fruit. This is a very interesting information I am sharing with you. It is the ozone layer depletion. 
the Montreal Protocol, where we agree as a world community agreed that we have to reduce the production of ozone depleting substance ODS. And now, because Uh -huh. you, are you, you are not audible, sir. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So the first international environmental treaty protocol that is successful then showing the fruit of success is the Montreal Protocol where we sit together and curtail down the production of ozone depleting substance. And the last year, 2020, a paper of the nature revealed that the ozone layer is getting healed up and by 2050, it will regain the shape of what was in there in 1950s. So this is one good thing, good news I'm sharing. So from 1992 to till date, it is the era of protocol and where we sit together and this, uh, and we invited different stakeholders for a particular problem, like the desertification, like the climate change, like the sustainable development. So, and that is called COP, Conference of the Party. So similar, the last one of the very significant development is the Paris Climate Change Agreement. You all heard it, I hope. It is very, it is one of the buzzword nowadays everybody is using, the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Let me, although the environment is so huge topic that I just, touch up, touching the different aspects so that we'll have a very holistic understanding of uh, environment and the current discourse and debate taking place at the national and global level. So Paris Climate Change Agreement is uh, one, of the, one of the largest agglomeration of the world leadership. We sit together and bring two very futuristic uh, uh, regulations binding regulation to everyone. The first, and it will talk about to curtail the pace of the climate change that is happening. And climate change, you know, because of the global warming and global warming is because of emission of greenhouse gases, particularly the carbon dioxide that is coming from the burning of any biological material, including the fossil fuel. So the Paris Climate Change Agreement, the major point is that you are going to reduce the green, uh, green greenhouse gas emission so that temperature is going to not exceed 2 degree by end of this millennium. It means whatever global temperature is there, it is only allowed to increase 2 degree frame, 2 degree, so that we are going to do everything Maybe, I mean, the reducing the emission so that the global temperature is not going to exceed 2 degrees centigrade. And second is further futuristic that we do everything to curtail the rise within 1.5 degrees centigrade. So we start with 2 degrees and if possible, we will curtail it down at 1.5 degrees centigrade. 
It is very interesting story. I mean, the, the concept here, what do we mean by 1.5 degree temperature rise? What do we mean by two degree temperature rise? So from 1900 to 2000 and 2000, from 1900 to 2000, world global average temperature increased by just 0 0.6 degree centigrade. And if you allowed industrial emission or greenhouse gas emission, the way it was, so this millennia from 2000 to 2100, this rise is going to be from 6 to 8 degree centigrade. Now, if 0 0.6 degree increase during 1900 to 2000, is so devastating, then you cannot imagine or predict the future if we are set to increase the global surface temperature by 6 to 8 degrees centigrade. It is going to cause changes in the earth system, the earth climate, water resources, and everything. I mean, desert if it is going to change in such a huge extent that it cannot be reversible to the previous state. So a conservative figure and very futuristic figure has adopted where it says that two degrees is the maximum limit if the global average temperature increased by two degree by 2100. Beyond that, it is irreversible problem that we face. So we fix the two degree, but since human being has enough capacity to do every, whatever they like. So we further try to reduce it to 1.5 degree centigrade. <clears throat> now, Charles Dickens once time said in some of this novel, very famous. It is, it is on particularly, I just remember that during the uh, France revolution, I mean, nine, 1789, when the, uh, French revolution is a milestone in the world social and political <clears throat> advancement that what where it is liberalism and others said it is the worst, it is best of the time and it is worst of the time. So the present condition, so there is two contradictions. Dactomy, you can see it is the best of the time and it is the worst of the time. It means, and this, this quote is very much relevant at present context and the player is the human being. So it is the best of time in the sense that human is very, human being has the society, the human society community has enough capacity to do whatever they want. To do whatever way, a, a human being has did all the impossible things. I mean, there with the technology, science, society, uh, uh, politics, pol uh, in terms of politics, it can do whatever they like. So it is the best time. You have everything. We are equipped with the technology. We are equipped with the science. You are equipped with the, one of the most intelligent and informed brain. We have this more than 7 million population. If they have the internet connections and, and knowledge sharing, it is knowledge capital nowadays, knowledge economy is there. So this is the best time to strike for what? It is the second um, uh, contradiction. The contradiction is it is the worst of that because we did uh, everything for the modernity and environment, but at the cost of environmental and natural degradation. So this is the right time. So, I mean, the where the uh, our Air is polluted completely. Where, in, irrespective of the India, you go the urban pollution, transportation traffic is there. Our water resources is depleting like anything. Majority of area is now going to uh, declare as a dark zone, particularly in the arid area where there is no groundwater. Groundwater is depleting like anything. Our groundwater is contaminated. Surface water where there is a majority of the river, particularly in the north India. Ganga Brahmaputra belt, majority of river never flow during lean period. Okay, so the water, the air, the soil is polluted because of the 
green, I'm not saying the burden to the green revolution, but because of the heavy input of the pesticide and fertilizers, changing the crop pattern, uh, disobeying the agroclimatic zone, so the productivity is decreasing and toxins are getting uh, into the food chain. Okay, so the area where the uh, you all are, it is one of the famous, um, it is uh, one of the area where the arsenic contamination is very high. We are exploring the cause, but till date the understanding is that it is the geogenic, but induced by the human activity. So this water is uh, arsenic contaminated, and it is considered one of the largest mass poisoning in the human history. Arsenic contamination is, it is a stretch from all the river valleys. If you start from the Indus Valley from Pakistan and go up to Vietnam, all the river valley in between, whether it is the Ganga, Brahmaputra, uh, Iravadi, Hwangho, uh, or whatever Yellow River, and go till the Vietnam, entire area is reported to have the high arsenic contamination. So the, our water is contaminated, our air is contaminated. Our livelihood has been threatened. Weather extremes are there. I mean, the, this is the very rare phenomena that the, 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 our forefather has faced. The two consecutive cyclones within a month, both are very much devastating. So the weather extremes are there. Drought are expanding, deserts are expanding. We have 7 billion population and we are going to be more than 10 billion by 2100. So agriculture area is shrinking while the agriculture production need is increasing. So all the problems, that's why it is called, it is the worst of the condition. But the good thing is it is the best of the condition that we can. So this is us, how we're going to define that. So this is the holistic understanding, the, 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 the picture that I brought over here. My second part of the presentation, but lecture is, I'm going to talk about the place of the human being on the earth and why it so expanded in the sense that it created the worst of the time. So, uh, as I, the, at the start of my lecture, I told that average span of any species is 2 million years. And human, how, how old the human being is? The earth is, is 4.5 billion year. You can calculate how many figure, we are, how many zero we are going to put on the 4.5 so that it is going to be the 4.5 billion year. And the life came on the earth at exactly 3.8 billion year. Just a minute, I am not audible. Let the problem is just there. You're audible, sir. Continue. Oh, somebody just ma some message that. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I just lay down to find out whether the connection is there or not. So uh, <clears throat> 3.8 billion a year. So if you talk, in the terms of billion year, million year, I mean, the, when the dinosaur was there, it is 66 million year old before. So it will give not a very realistic picture. But let's talk in 4.5 billion year is a 24 hour cycle. Just compare the age of earth is one, year, one, one day, 24 hour. So, I mean, the, <laughs> What is the time that human being on the earth? It is just came, the human being just came on earth three seconds before. We arrived on the earth at 11.57 midnight, 11.57 p.m. In just three seconds, Not 
Sorry, Sam. Uh, sorry, sir. For, uh, Sam, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now there was an interruption yeah. because of the internet connectivity at my place. Okay. So I am continuing. How much time left for me? Sir, you can continue after 1215. So approximately 17 minutes I had. Okay. So let me. Uh, um, 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 let me put the perspective of the how human becomes so, uh, I mean, deadly that it creates the worst of time. So we arrived on this planet just three seconds before, just three seconds. And in this, in these three seconds, we have changed the course of the world. And so uh, you all are aware of the time scale, geological time scale. So Earth history is um, given a different kind of eon, era, period, and epoch. To understand how the Earth history is, I mean, it is geological history, and the, it is not in year, but it is in millions of years and billions of years we talk about. So during the course of the history, we see that there are certain animal or plant life dominating the world at particular era. Like if you go the presently what you are using the fossil fuel, it was some Carveniferous period. Earth is full of the luxuriant forest and they vanished. It was the gymnosperm. It was a psychic kind of uh, uh, or the plant uh, and they vanished. That is now in the form of the coal and petroleum you can see. Similarly, a era come when the trilobites, molluscans dominate the world followed by arthropods dominates the world. And then this uh, era come where the dinosaur dominate the, dominates the world. Everywhere, the very big creature dinosaurs. So this earth is not, the human being is not the only creature that dominating the earth, but previous also several counterparts has been there, had been there. Some plants, trilobites, cephalo molluscans, arthropod, reptiles, and we are very much familiar. The fi film that came Jurassic Park. So we talk about the Jurassic and Jurassic period where the uh, dinosaur dominate the world. And thereafter, advent of the mammals come on the earth. So the recent, I mean, geological era that passed, it was dominated by the mammals. I'm not going to for the nomenclature point of view because it is uh, going to be very complex and nobody is going to remember. But for the reference, we can go and check the uh, geological time history. So the human being, it came in the very recent around the, uh, if I say human being, then I'm talking about the genus. Any organism is have the nomenclature pattern. It took it. It is the first name is the genus. And second one is the species. So if I say human, so I am talking about the homo. Homo is a genus. And if I uh, if I talking about the sapiens, you are talking about the present human being. We, I mean the, the that is dominating. So the human-like creature arrive on the earth at 2.5 million before. And from 2.5 million until 1.5 lack here, I mean the uh, 150,000 year, till date, it survived at different stage of development. Okay. Now, human being is dominating. Can you say what is our position, human being position in food chain? Human being position in the food chain is very special. We are at the top level. But the same thing is that we have no threat to any other human being. At present, we are at the top, but we don't have any threat from other organism. Like what deer feel in the forest, tiger is there. So the, the development of the deer and the tiger taken place together. In food chain, the development of the tiger and deer taken together and that process is called co-evolution. So rest of ecology evolved in the form and the term that is called co-evolution. Together, the ecosystem 
develop. So human being at that point of time, at 2.5 million before when we had went on the earth, particular probably in the Africa. So we co-evolve with other creatures. So I mean, the, our brain size is a little bit bigger. We we are like we are, we are exactly like the other chimpanzees, gorilla, orangutan. We are exactly the same way. From 225 lakh year to 4 lakh year. I mean, from 2500,000 year to 400,000 year. Situation never change. We are co-evolving with the other eco, eco, I mean, the other component of the ecosystem. Maybe the tiger was there, elephant was there, and we are co-evolving in the forest. But one thing that triggered from 400,000 year before, that is called 4 lakh year, what happened? Human being, the homo, I'm talking not about the homo sapiens, the human-like creature at the, our forefather, we can say, uh, uh, our forefather, the human, is started outturning this co-evolution process. So you are there, if you talk about the tropic level and the food chain, human being was in middle of the food chain. Maybe somewhere where the deer is there. So everyone has understanding of the food chain from the plant to uh, earth support, the grass supports and other, and to the uh, some birds and to birds, the snake, a snake to the eagle. So this is the grassland ecosystem. Similarly, in the forest ecosystem, uh, primary producer like the plants, then there is a uh, deer and then there is a, 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 the tiger. So this is the food chain. So till four lakh year back, human being, the homo sapiens, homo, not the sapiens, are exactly like the other creature. We, we are not different from the any other orangutan or chimpanzee. But after 4,000, 400,000 to 150, 100,000, in this period, there is a very onyx, on, I mean, the imbalance has taken place. And anyhow, this homo group or human like creature changed the course of the uh, food chain and bring back to the top consumer level. It has become the top of the food chain. It means they started hunting the large animal. Okay, and they bring at the top. So this has been taken in just two and two point five lakh year. Just it is a very teeny framework. I said in the geology, if you're talking about the evolutionary history of the Earth, the year are year is very irrelevant, insignificant, insignificant. So in two point five lakh year, human being jumped from middle of the food chain to top of the food chains. Now. What happened? This means if you are at the top of the food chain, it means literally there is no threat to you. Like tiger or lion, there is no threat in the forest. There is no life threat. So we have no life threat. And second thing, since this has been taken place in very short period of time in two point that is in the food chain, there is no co-evolution take place. I will make you understand a very simple example. Suppose a lion is started uh, to grip more cap capacity to hunt the deer. What will happen? There is another development take place in the deer that it just start moving fast. So the balance of the deer population and the lion population is going to balance naturally in the forest. So there is a check and balance. If there is a more deer population, what will happen? Lion start hunting more so that the balance is there. You understand? If there is a less deer population, then what will happen? Lion start to uh, anyhow manage with the less number of the deer. So there is always check and balance so that the food chain is not going to destabilize. But what happened with the human being? Human beings came on the top of the food chain and 
there is no check balance of the activity of the human being. So, in the forest, lion cannot be devastating to the forest because if it becomes devastating, then the deer may acquire some the skill to escape from the catch of the lion so that the lion population is going to balance. But here, what happened from 4 lakh to 1.5 lakh here in between, human beings jump to the top and without check and balance. So we are the king of the ecosystem just within 2.5 years and ecosystem unable to understand the cope up with the change. So what happened? We are full with the skill to devastate the ecosystem. So we have a safeguard that you are top of, top of the food chain. And second, there is no check and balance to the activity of the human being. Now, suppose till the time from 25 lakh to 4 lakh year, human being was nothing but a simple creature in the grassland on the forest. They have threat to the life, they have threat to the survival, they are fighting with the other creature to save themselves. So they are in continuous fear and anxiety during the revolutionary history. But after becoming, suppose the poorest people get enough amount of the money, what will go in the course? It is the unnecessary expense of the money. There is no plan. So similarly, a similar thing happened to the human being. It was the fearful human being. It was the fearful or anoxious human being that spent time in the forest under the threat of different creature. Such supposedly become the top, the king of the forest. What will happen? It become more dangerous. It become more queer. Because there is no check balance. And this phenomena, just after the, and then the, there is several other uh, genus uh, species has come up. Like you all know, the Homo neanderthal, neanderthal man, Homo erectus, Australopithecus, Ramapithecus, those so many other creatures, they are the Homo, but neanderthal. We are Homo, but sapiens. Sapiens means we very bluntly name ourselves as a must intelligent humanoid. Must an intelligent person. Sapiens means intelligent or wisdomful. So we are the must wisdom. So human being, Homo sapiens come into being with all the character of the their progeny. So there is no check and balance. And we are more cruel, we are more disestating. Nature has no control upon us. And with this skill, we killed the Neanderthal, we killed the erector, uh, erectus, Homo erectus. We killed the Florensis, the other I mean, gene, other families of the human-like structure. We killed human-like organism. We killed all, and we spread across the continent. Just within forty-five thousand year back, we spread all the landscape. Okay, and now if you see the kind of behavior that human beings shown, not only with the nature, but with their own species one behavior of one human being to the another human being. In spite of everything, we have treated in a worst manner. The, the, the war, there is a apocalypse came, the war, the conflict, the fight, even we put, you, you, you drop an atom bomb on each other. It is because no other creature misbehave or treat with a similar counterpart of theirs, how the human being is behaving. And similarly, it is doing to the nature. So this is one of the evolutionary trait that we bring from our past that we are at the top and there is no check from the ecosystem side. And we, after this, there is three important revolutions that take place. First is co a cognitive revolution. Cognitive revolution has been taken place where we started becoming more intelligent. A very specialized communication we develop. Ye, 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 ye skill that we develop, that we are going to control the natural forces. Like you all see in the movie, that very recently, uh, recent movie, The Lion King, where a, 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 a child 
human child is there in the forest and the forest uh, population is very much invited with the human because they use the fire according to their wish all other creature they have intelligence they can do the things but they cannot regulate the forces natural forces but we use the natural forces for ourselves so that is called cognitive revolution and you can see we have the large brain compared to the other creature so first thing, second thing that is happened in the agriculture revolution that taken place in 10 to 12000 year back where we started regulating the landscape cutting the forest and doing agriculture to feed ourselves so from hunter and gatherers we started settling down but with having the similar uh, uh, trait of being the super without any check and balance and we conquered the world and third but very recent revolution that taken place that bring the real devastation to the human system that is industrial revolution that hardly taken 500 year and the course of history has been changed in just 500 year just 500 year if you if you see the world from 1700 to second world war 1950s it was the most devastating era in the human history we conquered land we, we killed the people war i mean the second world war is the culmination after that there is a comparatively peace <laughs> but the all the misdeed of the by the 1950s the same character that i always mentioning how ecological safeguard we have we are at the top but without any check and balance so this threat is still that's why human being is more devastating more cruel compared to the rest of there is no parallel example the cruelty and devastation that mind in mindset human mindset in other creature not a single example you can find so the whatever we uh, we did in last uh, by the 1950s in the industrial revolution we are paying the price so i hope uh, i am able to uh, make my uh, point to you all that these are the important aspect of the earth day celebration environmental day celebration the basic background the current contemporary challenges and how the human being has conquered by and what are kind of skill it has that brought us at this stage it is the best of time it is the worst of time so i hope i should conclude my uh, understanding sharing my understanding with you and when wait for some interactive session if any so over to organizer thank you sir for your nice presentation am i audible y yes you are audible am i audible yes you are audible. yes yes you are audible yes. I would do, I would like to introduce Ms. Swaini Niyogi, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Hindi Shift, and Professor of our College, to continue the interactive session. Over to Swaini Di. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes. 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 Uh, thank you, Shantini. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure, sir. Uh, to thank you for such an insightful deliberation uh, that we were witness to such amazing speech uh, is just not a matter of pride to us, uh, but indeed a great privilege. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for the enlightenment that you have bestowed upon all of us. Uh, the way you have highlighted all the key points in your discussion was indeed praiseworthy just like you had started your speech, uh, that it is extremely synonymous whether we should save Earth or whether we should save ourselves is the matter or the key question of the day. Well, now we have few questions from the participants. With your due permission, sir, I would like to take them one at a time. Uh, so the first question is uh, from our very own faculty member, uh, he is from the Department of Zoology. Arnubda, he has asked 
that are we living in an age of extinction? Okay. Uh, very, I mean, the pertinent question, actually, I has to make some point during my presentation, but uh, so many things are there, so I'm able to bring this point. But yes, uh, we are going to, a, I mean, we are in middle of the uh, mass extinction. I mean, so the rate of the extinction calculated based upon the number of species we have, it is it is a th it is around i mean the 100 to 150 species are vanishing from the planet earth compare to the natural background rate of hardly 5 a year or something so it is a much much and the cause of the this mass extinction is there it is debatable but still majority of scientific community is agreed that it is the human activity that is leading. Before this mass extinction, mass, ex, mass extinction is a natural process. Until date, five such mass extinction has been taken place. And the most recent past, it is the extinction of the dinosaurs. It is because of the meteorite collusion. Before that, all the four mass extinction was due to natural causes not because of and this is the fifth one is because of some external factor and the last the, the present mass extinction rate is because of the human activities thank you sir uh so we have another question from one of our students um and the question is is there any impact of covid 19 uh the dangerous uh pandemic that we are all in on the ecosystem so the question is, is there any impact of COVID-19 on ecosystem? Uh, indeed, a very, I mean, the relevant question. I mean, the people are working uh, to find out from the common database to understand what are the impact of the COVID. So the cause of the COVID, you all know, it is also one of the major factor of the arrival of such disease. Although there are some, I mean, the speculation that is on the discussion, serious speculations I am saying whether it is man-made or not, but it is the zoonotic in nature. It is because of some of the imbalance between the human and animal interaction that lead to. So not talking about the cause of the COVID, but what are the impact? So the COVID bring, uh, induce the lockdown at a global scale. And in 2020, one of the very positive outcome, the only positive outcome that came from the COVID, that the greenhouse emission reduce by 7%. This is very substantial figure, 7%. And in fact, all the Indian cities, I mean, who is the generally worst polluted cities among the list of the global list. So they saw a quite impressive improvement in those lockdown periods. Even our river started giving, I mean, the, I mean, the more oxygenated water as compared to pre-lockdown period. But there is one, one finding from the Center for Science and Environment that recently produced their figure that possibility of bounce back of the pollution episode. Because once the lockdown was over, people jump into the market and that may lead to overconsumption, transportation, industry emission at a very high rate to cope up with the uh, slow economic periods that faced during the 2020 and 2021. So the, uh, the figure is not very impressive, but of course it has some positive implications on because the human activity has been restricted. Thank you, sir. So the next question is from Sukhbir Singh Sahota. And uh, the question is how we as human beings can contribute to the betterment of the ecosystem as framing laws are not enough. Uh, he has also added that government has set up eco parks, started Project Tiger, but still this is not enough. If you could share your views on this. I mean, this is a, one, of, one of the most debatable question. I mean, the people are finding what is the best way. Till we are, we are in the process of debate, global debate is there that who is going to take responsibility of the mess that created. Of course, it's a developing world problem. But now 
everybody should take the responsibility. Although the India, if I am giving some example, India contribution to the global emission of total global emission of the global warming is just three percent, just three percent. Since we are measuring the greenhouse gas, just three percent. But West are developing, but expect that India take the equal partnership to curbing the greenhouse emission. So that 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 is the in, uh, country level debate is going on. But of course there is hope. I see it now. It is best of time because the human being is well informed. When human being is equipped with all the technical uh, technical skill, everything it a human being has. So this is the best time to contribute. I will give just example what how, what we can do. Wake up in the morning and till the evening. Just watch your lifestyle, and we'll find where we have to cut, uh, curtail. Suppose what kind of food you eat. So is there possibility that we are going to bring down your impact on the earth? Suppose I I I I I am eating meat every day. So one kg meat production required. 60 kg of the carbon dioxide emission. While 1 kg of wheat production required 1.5 kg of the carbon dioxide emission. Hang on. There is further. I mean the best option. 1 kg of banana. Production required just 700 gram of carbon dioxide emission. So just choice is yours. So in the food habit, you can change your clothing habit. You can change. Your your transport habit you can change, so it is individual. I mean the expectations as a community we can do for your village. So lot of opportunities are there, but the thing is that whether we realized or not, if you realize our individual responsibility, then I always said it is the best of time we can do the miracle. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have another question from. Prithish Kumar Bormon, he has two questions. I'll place them one by one. Uh, his first question is, up to what extent ecosystem could restore in the global lockdown posed by COVID? And he has continued with that, is lockdown a sustainable process for ecosystem restoration? As a, as a environment list, if I, be, I I close my eye and forget everything, that is the only solution of this is the mess we have created. That is stop dumping our waste, stop interfering the nature. But this is not the feasible solution. This is not the feasible solution. Yes, I already told that. A, a, I will give two example how ecosystem restored during the lockdown. One I already said that the seven percent reduction in the global carbon emission, 7% reduction. This is a very substantial figure. Second thing, we calculate the human impact in terms of the uh, 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 e ecological footprint and biocapacity. Ecological footprint is the, the, the impression, the resource consumption that we, we require to sustain our present lifestyle. And biocapacity is what the nature can provide to you. So based upon that, there is a very famous concept, very, I mean, the practical concept to understand that is called oversuit day. So the last year, so oversuit is a kind of annual stock that earth regenerate for the human being. So ideally, the annual stock should end 365 day of year. But because our consumption is more, so we vanishes in seven month, eight month, or nine months. So in 2019, the world's oversuit day was celebrated on 29th of uh, July, 29th of July. In 2020, because of the lockdown, consumption has been reduced. So this oversuit day has increased by 22 days. So to in, in, in 2020, it was celebrated on 22nd August. You got the point? So this is the measure how ecosystem revive, how our consumption slow down during the lockdown of 2020. 
So further downfall is expected in 2021. So these are the two figures through we can monitor, we can understand the uh, re ecosystem restoration that taken place during the lockdown. And second, lockdown never been the sustainable option. We have to think something out of box to clear the mess that we created, not their complete lockdown. Wonderfully explained, sir. Uh, we shall take the last question uh, for this uh, interactive session. Uh, this is from Minaz Mondol. And uh, the question is, from the past two or three years, India is facing disastrous cyclones, as we all know, like Amphan, Titli, Hudhud, etc. So are all these caused by global warming? And also, shall we continue to face these cyclones in the upcoming year due to the rise of global warming? Okay. So this is very experiential question because the, the area where the West Bengal, Bihar, and particularly the Odisha, the particularly the coastal states are facing. So this is very relevant question. Yes, it is because of the climate change. It is because of the global warming. So there is no need to hide or close our eye the bare realities that that is coming to us. I mean, 20, 30 years back, I told. We realized that the climate is changing in 20, 1972 itself, but we took 40 years to accept that it is because of the human. So one of the prime, prime uh, outcome of the global warming is extreme weather condition. And the ocean, particularly the ocean is driver of the world climate, whether it is the local weather or it is a global climate, it is a driver. So because of the global warming, temperature of the sun, of the earth surface, as well as the water surface is going to increase. And if the temperature, there is slight difference in that, that it's turned out to be the form of cyclone because of the equatorial location of the country and several other cycle that is associated with it. Uh, I mean, the uh, weather or climate cycle associated with the ocean and Indian subcontinent. So this is con this is reflected in terms of the cyclones, very frequent cyclones. I already told that our forefather never encounter such bad opportunity that two devastating cyclone within a week, maybe within two weeks. So uh, fre frequent cyclones is one of the uh, signatures, and other climatic extreme like in the form of the heavy rainfall and the our cloud burst, drought. So there is a complete reversal or intensification of the rainfall is going to be happen. This is this is happening, it started happening in the sense. So this is, yes, it is because of the global warming and climate change. Thank you, sir. Thank you for answering the questions in such a wonderful manner. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. uh, with that, we come to the end of the first interactive session. And uh, now may I please request Mrs. Modhumita Mondol, faculty member, Department of Geography, day shift of our college, to introduce the next speaker. Modhumita, uh, please. Before that, uh, let me uh, put me uh, put in record my gratitude, so the, my gratitude to the college administration, particularly the principal organizing team, and last but the most is the Chandana who bring me here for this interactive session. So this is my, this is, I am really honored and privileged. I, I want to say one more thing that I have another engagement in after that. So my continuation is not possible. So I request to excuse me for that. So, so I that again, is absolutely so fine. my gratitude and respect to you all. And last but not least, to the, all the listeners and the people who bring out very relevant question for my uh, to expand my understanding. So indeed, a learning experience for me. So thank you very much. Thank you, organizing team. Thank you, sir. We are honored. Modhumita Di, please you may continue. Thank you, Shohini. 
It's a great, great pleasure for me to introduce our second speaker today, who is going to talk to us about ecosystem restoration aims at sustainable development and goals. Our next speaker is Dr. Apurva Ratan Ghosh. Dr. Apurva Ratan Ghosh is now the professor of environmental science, the University of Badwan, West Bengal. He was the joint director of internal quality assurance cell and director of UGC academic staff colleges, presently human resource development center of the university. Dr. Ghosh has received the Indian Science Academy visiting fellowship and fellowship from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. He has received best presenter award from IUPAS Austin, USA, and acted as inverted speaker and panel expert in the University of Manchester, Texas, UK, and BITS in China. He has got authorship of eight books, eight chapters in edited volumes, and 98 research papers published in referred national and international journals. Professor Ghosh has already backed 19 research projects and schemes sponsored by different Indian agencies. Professor Ghosh is actively engaged as member coordinator with peer team of NAC. He has worked expert member of University Grant Commission, NUPA, as well as expert member of different universities. He has got experience to work as an expert member in academic audit committee in Northeastern North universities and other universities. He is also nominated as expert member of Assam Public Service Commission, Jharkhand Public Service Commission, etc. He has been assigned as resource person to deliver the lecture on academic audit and green audit in different academic institutions. He is the life member of different national and international bodies and auditorial board of national and international peer reward journals. Dr. Ghosh has already delivered more than 35 seminar lectures, 42 lectures in 17 different ASCs 76 invited popular lecture and chaired over 12 national and international conference. Now I would request to Dr. Apurva Ratan Ghosh to deliver the lecture. Sir, please continue. Even are audible, sir. To front of the camera. Yes, sir. You are audible. Unmute your microphone. Okay, sir. Sir, are you facing uh, any problem to share your skin? Yes, 
सर प्लीज ऑनमेट योर ऑडियो सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक्रोफोन Sir, you were not audible. Have you started your uh, lecture, sir? No, I'm not for us. हेलो सुनते हैं अच्छे हैं हाँ सर सुना है अच्छे यू कैन कंटिन्यू अच्छा अच्छा सॉरी फॉर दिस इन आठ बटन डिले एनीवे मानोस बाबू यू कैन फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल प्रेजेंट माय Presentation first, 
so you can share my presentation okay you uh, you, st uh, you can share my presentation yes, sir please wait Okay, okay, okay. We are going to share your presentation. Mm. Sir, now Sir, you can now proceed. We have shared okay. your uh, PPT. Okay, okay, okay. In the meanwhile, uh, I will start my presentation. Today, in this session, I have chosen the topic, which is, to me, it's a relevant in one sense, that when we are talking about the generation restoration, which is coming from ecosystem restoration, on that is the theme which United Nation, that is the decayed ecosystem restoration, that mean 10 years to restore the earth ecosystem in the coming 10 years and uh, if you consider the millennium development goals mdgs then we have seen that this millennium development goal which was started in 2000 in the millennium development summit and it was told by 2015 we will set at least eight goals containing 21 targets. And within these uh, eight goals, goal number seven is counted for the ecosystem restoration that I will discuss with you. And beforehand, if you see my presentation, the first slide which I want to show you that the global scenarios, broad channels. Coming to the evolutionary point of ecosystem and the ecosystem restoration starting from ecological de degradation, I will tell you that the first thing which was most important in this respect, it was the market forces. In market forces, there are 500 companies in the world. They are contributing 70% of the world trading. And the powerful global actors, they are advancing the priority of free markets and economic expansion. Actually, these market forces have tremendous pressure on the environmental degradation. So, after this, if you come to the, my second slide, observing this environmental degradation, second slide, next one, I will come to the policy reforms. What you have seen? When we are observing the environmental degradation, Next one, that government are able to forge the comprehensive initiative to design, to align the economy with environment and social goals. There were some incremental changes, obviously, but fundamental change was absent. Therefore, it brings about the distinction. Next slide, please. So we have seen the fortress world. That means the systemic global crisis depends. And the powerful international forces, they are able to impose order in the form of authoritarian system. So what we will see, there will be a distinction between the Annex 1 and non-annex countries. There will be a distinction between the biodiversity rich country and the industrial rich country. So, 
this cannot be existed in this world where there is a balance. So there is a breakdown. Next slide, please. The authoritarian forces, fortresses world, and unable to counter the spreading chaos as environmental and social crisis spill over of control and conflict the spreads. Come to the next one. In this case, after the chaos, what we have seen? Eco-communism. Eco-communalism. What it does? It incorporates green vision that you have seen here. Bio-regionalism. Localism. Face-to-face -face democracy. And the small technology. Small, small technology and economic autarky which resulted into environmental restoration and repairing. So we can see this eco-communalism. The concept of this eco-communalism came to our mind with the environmental restoration and repairing. Now you will see the new sustainability if you go through the next slide. In this new sustainability, globalization, what we have thought about once upon a time, it was only as a treat. No, it also an opportunity to construct a planetary civilization. This planetary civilization, which can envision the ascendance of new categories of consciousness. It's the formation of global citizenship and humanity as a whole. So we will get wider wave of life and well-being of the future genera. That we restoration of this of earth. That means earth to restore. So if you come to the next slide, I will tell you that the environmental consciousness awareness, it was started sometimes in 1903 with the Nobel laureate Sabanthe Arrhenius and the scientists in the next phase of its time, those who have talked about the depletion of ozone, that means Berlin Marine, then our Prusen and the Roland. Next slide, please. And after that, the great African lady, Wagneri Mathai, and finally, IPCC chairman, that is Pachori Sir. Now I will tell you the degradation reason behind it. Where you have seen, I will show you that slide in the next one, that the number of greenhouse gases with their potentialities, and the amount that was released into the atmosphere due to the human activity. That is the Anthropocenic era, the era which was started in the year 1945 after the Trinity. So this Anthropocenic epoch or era is the reason behind for its, uh, are you presenting, sir? Hello? 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 Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. You are. Okay, okay. So, but the, okay, okay. This slide came again. One second, what I've seen. So, after this greenhouse gases, we have considered the carbon as a culprit. Because whatever we are doing, whatever the event we are doing, maybe in the organization, maybe in the individual, maybe in the domestic, maybe in the industry, we are liberating the carbon dioxide. Next slide, please. But this carbon dioxide is required for the maintenance of balance. That means the temperature in this earth. And the temperature in this earth 
is maintained that this greenhouse gases, particularly the carbon dioxide, is maintaining the earth temperature of the earth. But if it is excess, what will happen? It is told that if there is a rise of 100 ppm of carbon dioxide, then there will be a rise of 1 degree centigrade temperature. But it is not happening because of the carbon sequestration. That means the carbon, it will undergo sink. May I have the next slide, please? So this carbon sink, we can call it sequestered carbon. That means the carbon dioxide, which is sequestered either in the soil, by the plants, by the ocean, now come to the next slide where I will show you that where the carbon can undergo sinks. The first of all, the carbon which is called brown carbon. The carbon which is liberated due to the burning of fossil fuel. Then come to the black carbon, the carbon which is mean for soot, dust. They are the also contributor of the greenhouse gases. Now come to the green carbon. Green carbon, that means the carbon which is sequestered in the photosynthesis. Yes, next one, which you are showing. And come to this blue carbon, this is the new concept, which is also known as the blue economy. And the resultant of this, we have seen the loss of sea grasses, where the carbon can be sequestered. Sorry, sir, uh, for interrupting. Uh, sir. Huh? Uh, wait for a moment. Uh, part, dear participant, please ping on Asansol Girls College. Then you can uh, able to uh, see the PPT. Dear dear participant, please ping on Asansol Girls College co-host. Then on you can be able to see the presentation. Ami dekhi. Dekhi. Khub asubida hote chami buzde paachi. Disturb hmm. so you can uh, continue. Uh, okay. I think uh, we think participant now can, can see the PPT. Uh, okay. Please, now participant, you... uh, ping on Asansol okay? Girls College co host. Then only you can able to see the slide. Thank you. Okay, Sir, you can I'm presenting uh, continue. Now my own slides. Okay. Uh -huh. So as a result of that, this uh, as I told you that 70% of the carbon is capturing and storing as a blue carbon, which is one of the largest sink. That means this mangrove, seagrass, salt marsh, sea grasses. These are all different types of this one. They are uh, restoring this one hello acha prasansol girls college ei sharing ta bondho korun ami amar ta korachi dekhchi okay sir dekha jacche okay okay now this uh, yes i am presenting do she okay is it all visible yes sir yes sir. not visible is it visible? Okay. Not visible, sir. Not visible, sir. Huh? Share the 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 Ever the Karache? 
Hello. Is it visible? Dark, dark screen. Please wait. Uh, sir, please wait a moment. Sir, you are visible, but the slides are not visible, sir. But I am sharing the slides as yeah. it is mentioned. Okay, sir. But due to some technical problem for us, it is not visible. It is already one o'clock. Hello. Should we call Ah, uh, sir, sir. It will be better if you continue, sir. Uh, Manoj Babu. Oh. What am I minimizing? Amito Akunto about Biri Gachimunuchi and not Biri Jaini Tale Kunjagata Tiki Jawong Sharami Kurishi in two Daranami Toma. हाँ, अमी, अमी, अमी शेही भाभी कोरे ची, तो अमार अखुन जेटा दानिए गये चे, अमी किंतु अखुन उन्नत्रो रोए गये ची मनोचे, शेयर, कंटेंट। सर, ये डूले बेटर इफ यू कंटिन्यू सर, अदरवाइज देर में देर में भी कैंडल पिंकल प्रॉब्लम। ये देखो ना अमी तो शेयर कोरे ची। Share Kuret operator the kitchen eight at the Akachamaki. Now, what we have seen that after this emission of this carbon dioxide, which is presented in the sea, that means ocean, which we call the blue carbon, or it is also known as blue economy. And in this blue economy, this coral reefs was one of the most economic resources. They undergo bleaching due to this carbon acidification. Now, what are the other changes? That is the Greenland ice sheet. Now, this our Gangotri. You see this our the Alaska where the sunlight is coming in the year 1939 and which is on 2016. And what is the fate of this polar? This is penguins and polar bears. And after observing this, we have losing this total loss of mangroves due to the considering ocean as a beam, B I N beam. What is it, what it was? If it is, these pollutants are entering into our body. If you consider only the carbon dioxide for the ecosystem or the terrestrial system or the ocean, but the human body is how much it is affected. It is affected through this entry of the in the lung. In the deposition of this, as a result of that, this particle, the size of this particle, which is uh, very, very less, that is called PM 2.5 or 2 PM 2.5, how they are affecting our lung, alveoli, and making the black patches on it. Not only this, but it is causing our uh, heart disease. Not only you see that the air pollution causes the heart disease or cardiovascular disease but our this state is also causing this so if you want to estimate my previous speaker has already given this data to you i'm not elaborating it is but i should mention one thing that which is becoming in this covid 19 situation everybody is thinking about and they are facing the problem or crisis that the scientists have reported that within the melting, within the permafrost, that means the Arctic, Antarctica ice, ice, this permafrost is the museum of microbes. These microbes, which is bacteria, virus, or whatever the pathogens it is, they are staying within it. 
and at a time when this ice will melt for your information 2007 to 2012 220 million tons of ice from this permafrost has melted as a result of that a number of microbes they are leaching out from this ice what we have seen that they have reported that what the outbreak which was occurred in 1890 the smallpox was obtained it was obtained from the side siberia but there are this RNA particle which is, has been observed. And after 120 years during the flood, these microbes, these dead bodies come out and they have affected the riverine areas. I will tell you a short story of it. August ML Peninsula Tecta Potonto Rasheraki Potonto Grame Eki Baro Bachelo Chile Hotat Kore Anthrax Roge Akranto High Tashonga Kurijon Bektio Akranto High Dakagalo Ijatras Rug Eta Pochato Bachor Age Shekanka Jedu Hajar Rendier Maragicillo She Rendier Gulo affected Hochilo Ej Rendier Chobi up to Dekta Bachan Tara affected which will anthrax loge. Ebon nearby river basin, Tara Jokon buried Huegichilo put, or that borrow of a Niche Puregichilo. Ajkir Agost Masher, say temperature, say Aista, melt or folly. Ajkik into say Virasta SH, say Jibanuta SH. And that is affecting these people. That is affecting these people. That is affecting that boy, resulting into a death. But this is not the small event. If you go in depth of it, then you will see. Can you imagine? In the 19th century, there are two lakh of reindeer died in this, and they were buried in this permafrost. What will happen? That will make the opening of the another Pandora's box of disease. So this is this result of the ice melt after even. When the American propaganda was there, it was made by Fred Price that Amrat Koti Koti Taka Koroch Kochi Amadir Biganira Koroch Koreniche to see that there is a ankle deep water. Even that fellow, he is under the water, his tables and chairs under the water. Karunki. Because if you stop the industrialization and the production of carbon dioxide in America, there will be annual loss of $2,000, $2,000 million. So it cannot be stopped. So Bush was very enthusiastic. And he told those who are the Jara uh, America, those who are enemy of America, they are the enemy of civilization. And they, and he told, that the India and China should be included in the binding commitment for reduce reduction of these greenhouse gases. So, the phenomenal growth which was happened, which was taken into account, I mean, internet problem Now I will start from this point that this Millennium Development Goal, which was started in 2000. And it should be continued to 2015, which was succeeded by Sustainable Development Goal. And this in the Millennium Development Goal, which was considered to ensure the environmental sustainability. Ami Amar, Choto Choto Chhatro, Dirke Bolte Chai. Jee the word sustainability, it is derived from the Latin word sustainer, S-U-S, then T-I-N-E-R-E. This tenure means to hold a SAS means under. So what is sustainability? To the act I define kot hai. Sustainability is the ability to exist constantly. This word was first used in German forestry circles by Hans Karl in the year 1713. sustainability That you know, in 2020, during February 10 to 12, our Prime Minister, when addressing 
a flagship event of World Sustainable Development Summit, which was organized by Terry, that is the Tata Energy Resource Institute. And he told two things. One is health for our people, health of our planet. So this Millennium Sustainable Development Goals, where they have considered the eight goals and goal number seven, which means to ensure the sustainability. For what? It is based on big three pillars. The three big pillars are first one, economic viability. Second one, environmental protection. And third one, social equity. Now this, so what it talks about to ensure the environmental sustainability, I'm not going in detail about it. But after that, the sustainable development goals, where we have considered 17 goals and 164 targets. Among this, the sustainable number, sustainable goal number 13, 14, and 15. And my predecessor, which they are talking about, the first one is climate action. Now in this climate action, after this climate action, you will see three things. First one, loss of biodiversity. Second one, pollution. And third one, wastes. And I have discussed about the life below the water when I considered the ocean, as well as the life on land. The microbes which is present in this, the microbes which is present in this water is amounting to 1 into 10 to the power 30 in numbers. How much in number for my students it is? If you connect one by one, then it will cross 60 galaxies. If you can, if you make it a weight of it, then you will see that which is the more than the number of blue whales, the largest mammal which is present in the ocean, more than that. So if we go for this sustenance, then we can save our planet because we know this loss of biodiversity, when we have identified only 21 lakh species, but there are at least 152, 152,000 crores of species which has been not yet identified. And all the, spe all the species in this earth, either it is hydrosphere, lithosphere or atmosphere. If you consider the 10,000 meter constant, then it is approached by this earth. That means this species. Only it is told that so far the knowledge is concerned that the Dalol Lake, which is a water body where the temperature is extreme and the salinity is, and acidity is very high, salinity is very high, there is no life. But if you see our planet, which is Goldilocks, I, as, as I told you, that is only due to the presence of this carbon dioxide. And how many species that it is present and how many it has been, we are losing today. That is the result of it. So we can restore the resources which is available in our, which is used by the mankind. Only the technology, that means the biotechnology, because I cannot stop the activity which is going on. I can reduce the commission of carbon dioxide. As it is mentioned by my earlier, that one kg of meat which is required, how much of water, how much of carbon dioxide is emitting. We require the meat. We can lessen it. Or in the industrial development or the production of steel, once upon a time it was releasing the carbon dioxide, it is now can be reduced to 50,000 emission, 50% I mean, reduction of the carbon dioxide. That we can do. Similarly, by the application of this biotechnological method, we can reduce, we cannot, um, we can reduce the uh, emission of this carbon dioxide. And today, the most critical point that we have reached or that is called vaccination. My friends, my the friends of the junior friends or the younger, my students, beloved students, 
you see the cohesion between these bacteria, microbes, throughout the evolution, along with the mammal, it is coexisted. Kokono virus bacteria tara jite chhe, kokono manus jite chhe tar vaccine abiskar kore. So then there is a continuous fight against it. Someone, action na action ke ek baat thamte hobe. So if you consider these vaccinations, then you can shotti kore. Now, virus or bacteria which we have left at least 30,000 or 40,000 before. That means at the uh, evolution of the hominid group. And it's a great museum. Then we have to think about this preparation of this vaccine. Special sequence consequences. Amra dekhte pabo GM crop. Aj, these are all these transgenic crops. Kano abishkar hoyche? Either it has store kora juno, or to see the colorful structure of it, to resist from the disease, to get the less water. So in this way, we have used so some of the current transgenic crops. That is the BT cotton this is the drought tolerant gm products and i will tell you this arthur devries who has isolated the um, uh, protein that means called which is called anti fridge proteins from a fish that the not authentic fish in our hathe jay master api dekhte bachchen eta uche shai ami antarctica Master Jar Mudetake Potinta Tini Bear Korchen. Even a potinta bear core, Tini Kintu, a strawberry pitch on a lagi chen, Jatekina, eta increase the frost resistance. Chick Sherakom Kore. Amraje pesticide glue use gochi. Today we are using the glyphosate, that is the third generation pesticides. Age pesticide glue amra use gochi. A can't take out. Jate use core say generate inhibit kora jai. Tar action ke. That Jono Kinto Amade GM crops, Amra, or the genetically modified crops under the war Kuchi. Amidakatechi due to a distinction, Actauche BT cotton, corn, or Actauche, the Kun non BT cot, which is infected by the resistant uh, microbes number one. Edukun tomato, Jetaku Taratari, Amade Kache, Amra Sobai Jani picked and spread the hormone, Eta ethylene to include the ripening. Eta Jatari Nos to Nahuja. Amade say golden variety. Or the golden rice that we have seen, at the golden rice that it has giving the calories which is maximum. That is, you have seen 37 microgram per gram of carotenoid. And these are the different. Ami dakhte the chesta korechi. J tialless onion, theke aromo kore purple tomato, then the colorful cauliflower. Eta amra onik ei dekte pai onik jagathe. Then blue roses. So some of the benefits that I have. Mentioned here, Kinto Ami Akta Kichu mentioned Kurbo. What are the perceived disadvantages of the GM crops? Kano Kurbo? Now it has got some potential impact on the non target species. It has Jeshomosto target species, a Kajkori Tikotai. Kinto non target species Koeta, Thongshokote Shahaju Kurche. Potential for increase of the weakliness, increase in toxin levels in the soil. Amra soil Jani. The soil is harboring human numerous microbes. Tale shekhane jodi a soil, amra soil theke microbes ke baachate chai. Ta hole kintu amader ke etake dikte hobe. Then exchange of the genetic material between the transgenic crops and the related plant species. As a result of that, amra kintu shob shomai ekta ethical question mo deshe daniye jai. Chutorang selection for selection of resistance among populations of the target pest. Se jo naam likhe chilam the think about it when we are using the pesticide beforehand we have to think about it and that journal is a GM crops I mean I have set the five ethical concerns because cannot consider currency now for the ecological restoration for the ecosystem restoration if we want to reimagine or recreate and restore the whole into Amade that we have to follow the technological means, the technology that will uh, not harm the 
হিউম্যান বিং তার সত্ত্বেও আমি বলবো এই যে জিএম ক্রপস এটা কিন্তু পোটেনশিয়াল হার্ম টু হিউম্যান হেলথ এটা কিন্তু কয়েকটা এথিক্যাল প্রশ্ন এসেছে পোটেনশিয়াল ড্যামেজ টু দি এনভায়রনমেন্ট নেগেটিভ ইম্প্যাক্ট অন ট্র্যাডিশনাল ফার্মিং প্র্যাকটিস একটা ইউজুয়াল যে আমাদের ট্র্যাডিশনাল ফার্মিং সিস্টেম ছিল তার মধ্যে কিন্তু একটা নেগেটিভ ইম্প্যাক্ট এনেছে সব থেকে বড় কথা এক্সেসিভ কর্পোরেট ডমিনেন্স দ্য কর্পোরেট সেক্টর দে আর ডমিনেটিং ওভার দিস ক্রপস অ্যান্ড দে আর ইউজিং দিস টেকনোলজি ইন এ হিউজ আমি একটা ফ্রুটসের কথা বলতে পারি তাকে বলা হয় নিউজিল্যান্ড কুই ফ্রুটস এবং সেই কুই ফ্রুটস পৃথিবীর মার্কেটে সব থেকে বেশি বিক্রি হয় এবং তার অনেকগুলো গুণ আছে নেক্সট নেক্সট আন ন্যাচারাল আন দিস আই উইল টেল ইউ দিস আন ন্যাচারালনেস অফ দ্য টেকনোলজি এটা এথিক্যাল প্রশ্ন বলেছি যারা দোজ হু আর ওয়ার্কিং অন দ্য জিএম প্রোডাক্ট দে ক্যান অলসো কিপ ইন ইউর মাইন্ড দ্যাট হোয়াট এভার দ্য টেকনোলজি উই আর অ্যাডপ্টিং দিস মাস্ট বি ইউজ ফর দ্য বেনিফিট অফ দ্য হিউম্যান কাইন্ড থ্যাংক ইউ ফর গিভিং মি দিস অপরচুনিটি বাট আই মাস্ট সে দ্যাট টুডে ডিউ টু দিস টেকনিক্যাল প্রবলেম আই ওয়াজ নট সো ফ্রি টু রিয়েলি হোয়াট ওয়াই ওয়ান্ট টু সে আমি যেরকম করে বলতে ভালোবাসি সেরকম বলাতে আমার একটুখানি আটকে গেছে এনিওয়ে দ্যাটস ফাইন সি নেক্সট টাইম ইফ ইউ গট অ্যানাদার চান্স থ্যাংক ইউ Thank you very much, Dr. Nirmal sir, Nirmal Khoura from Konstantin sir. Wonderful presentation. presentation. We are very thankful to you for sharing your valuable thoughts with us. And I think participants will be enriched and gain knowledge about this topic. Thank you again. Now I would request to our faculty member Sohini Niyobi to continue the next interactive session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madhumita Di. Uh, though in the beginning, we faced certain technical glitches, uh, yet once everything fell into place, it was absolutely incredible, sir. The way you tailored your message for the audience and captivated them from the beginning of your presentation to the end, it was absolutely awe-inspiring. You had actually kept virtually every member of the audience hanging on to each and every word. Uh, you have rightly uh, and aptly highlighted the importance, rather the significance of uh, Millennium Development Goals in Sustainable Development, and also pinpointed several other aspects concerning the environment. Uh, so with your due permission, uh, we would like to begin the interactive session. So the sure. first question, okay. okay, thank you, sir. The first question is from Molloy Mondul, and uh, his question is related to the discussion uh, where you were talking about greenhouse gases. He asks that are companies more or less environmentally responsible now than they were in the past? And why do you think that is? You see that uh, whatever the companies or industries, once upon a time, what was the bar or limitation for emission? Now, the according to the Factory Act, which has been recommended, it was told that the these are the emission restriction, which is called emission restriction. So the number of corporate sector or the even in the transportation, which is the major playing, uh, the major role which is played by the corporate sector. As you know that in the transportation, we are releasing at least 23% carbon dioxide. This is the records. And which is even sometimes production of methane. So, uh, particularly in the gesture land. Now this uh, petrol, diesel, or coal, whatever it is used in the industry, they are making some frame that you cannot exceed the limit of this emission of carbon dioxide. So what it was beforehand, now what it is the present scenario, 
there it is obvious the emission rate is rather slow and it is restricted and that is due to the policies that I have told in my second slide when the market forces was the market forces means the forces which was tremendous for the environmental degradation as per observing this one the policies and regulations was framed in our case also ministry of environment and forest and climate change they have also make as you know in the 2000 the um, just before hand that they have framed the laws that means the uh, world that means uh, environmental laws which has been making some in this uh, uh, EIA report the, that means you cannot emit huge amount of carbon dioxide or any other effluents into the uh, water body or soil beforehand you have to treat it and there are some characterization he, he, they have to follow this characterization that before emitting into the, or discharging into the soil or water you have to follow this criteria so in this way the government and corporate sector are restricted thank you sir so we have another question from shomi croy yes. and uh, he asks that uh, the viruses those are frozen in the permafrost region can those be used as a bio weapon in future <laughs> no no actually the use of this bio weapon it is not a new thing it was first used in 1813 so this uh, that is why some of the scientists they are talking about that you leave the missile o missile chhere din missile chhere diye ekta capsule er moto virus toiri kore ekta deshe chhere din that's enough so instead of this weapon of missile the bio weapon is more 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 dangerous for any sort of uh, war <laughs> And uh, yes, for your information, the number of these viruses which has been excavated from 80 lakh years old, Ashi Lokko Bachor Agekar Purono Borok Teke, Amun Amun virus power gache, Jalakin to scientist laboratory te Taderke, Lo Korachen, Kintu record Tatara a Muhute Charchena, because this of them may be very, very virulent. तारा किंतु भीरुलेंट होते पारे ये बंग वन सिटी टे जे लैबोरेटरी थे के में भी कोरोना भाइरस स्पील ओवर हुए चिलो तार कारण टा किंतु होते पारे तारा वो इटनी है किंतु काज कोर चिलेन ये बंग वो इजे काज कोर चिलेन और तब आम्रा जो कोन एक टा भाइरस बा बैक्टीरिया नहीं है काज कोरी तो कोन आम्रा देखते चाहे Jeta kono shomai ta ke pathogenic, non pathogenic, virulent, non virulent er majkhan ise dhar kuriye dae. Ajke amra bolchi COVID er second wave, third wave. Itar karon ta onnu kichu nae. Hoy to shay mutated variety kotha ta amra bhabchi. Anyway, kintu eta that should be a biggest, biggest weapon. That means bio weapon. Kichu kotha banana eta amader amader onek aage theke eta hoye Thank you, sir. The next question is from. So, Beat Singh Sahota, the question is, every species from microorganisms to giant whales are either endangered or have become extinct. It is only the human population that is exploding and increasing and is the cause of all trouble. So, why can't we do something about it and will this solve for most of our problems? Actually, the diversity in the species that we have seen or the reason of extinction. Obviously, the reason of extinction directly or indirectly related to the human population. As we know, I will give you an example. During last 50 years, the human population become doubled. And if you consider, if you consider that we, the human being, enhanced our protein requirement either wild animal or pasture from the pasture of the grazing animals three times 
can you imagine how many wild animals we are killing only to meet up our food this is one thing shudhu matro ei species gulo ke mamra mere felchi ami apnake ekta example boli bolche je bhalluker gallbladder theke chin corona virus er vaccine abishkar koreche ebong apnake boli ami amar chhatro chhatrider ke boli चीन देश हे पृथ्वी से ही एक देश जे देश सब एनिमल रिसोर्स के क्या लागिए तरह ओषुद तैरी कर पैंगोलिन ये एलिगेटर मंस तरह एत प्रिय तत पृथ्वी थे सर दीचे क्योंकि मेजार निचे चौष्टिंग नष्ट कर क्लैमेट चेन्ज This is the two sides of the single coin. तारे ये भावे वो कल तारे कल को को तुलना करो चे. Thank you, sir. The figures are really frightening, though. Uh, sir, we will take yes. the last question uh, from this session. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. So uh, one of our students has asked that what can be the long-term measures, keeping in mind sustainable development, in order to control climate change, especially. कारण हमेशा डिफरेंस जैकेचार ग्रेडियंट आगे छात्र छात्री उन् that we are facing the problem of the rising of temperature is a rising of temperature seta kintu due to release of this carbon dioxide as well as greenhouse gases tahole amra jodi ei greenhouse gas carbon dioxide ta ke monitor korte pari take jodi amra tar spot ta resource source ta identify korte pari ebong take jodi amra measure korte pari then in some cases we can be able to control this natural it is a natural phenomena but it is induced by this one ekhon to global warming er respect e ajkal bola hocche ei typhoon hok super cyclone hok egulo toiri hocche bigganira bhoy pacchen agami agami dine ना ग्लोबल डिमिंग हो जाए जेखने लॉस ऑफ कार्बन जेखने लॉस ऑफ टेम्परेचर है 
এবং লস অফ টেম্পারেচার তার কারণটা বলছেন যে এই যে এত এত ডাস্ট ফল এবং এরোসল হচ্ছে হুইচ ইজ অ্যারাউন্ড হুইচ ইজ মেকিং দ্য আমব্রেলা ওভার দ্য আর্থ তারপরে যেটা আসছে না দ্য সানলাইট যেটা আসছে সেটা রিফ্লেক্ট ব্যাক হয়ে রিরেডিয়েটেড হয়ে চলে যাচ্ছে দ্য সাম পার্ট অফ দ্য কান্ট্রি উইল বি ডিমিং দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ফেনোমেনা হুইচ ইজ কলড গ্লোবাল ডিমিং তাহলে আমাদের কাছে আমরা যদি এই গ্লোবাল টেম্পারেচারটাকে আমাদের বিজ্ঞানীরা বলছেন আমরা যদি উই ক্যান মেজার ইট আমরা যদি কার্বন ডাইঅক্সাইড সত্যি করে মেজার করতে পারি তার সোর্স পয়েন্ট থেকে তাহলে কিন্তু আমরা যদি রোগটাকে আইডেন্টিফাই করা যায় আপনি আমি সবাই জানি যদি আমি রোগটাকে আইডেন্টিফাই করতে পারি যদি আমি ব্লাডটা মেজার করতে পারি এই ব্লাডে আমার কতটা সুগার আছে কতটা হিমোগ্লোবিন আছে কতটা নিউট্রোফিল আছে কতটা অন্য এনজাইম আছে তাহলে কিন্তু আমি রোগটাকে ডিটেক্ট করতে পারব আমারও প্রশ্নটা হচ্ছে তাই যদি আমি আমার ক্লাইমেটটাকে আমার অ্যাটমসফিয়ারটাকে আমি মেজার করতে পারি আমার কার্বন ডাইঅক্সাইডের সোর্সগুলোকে আমি মেজার করতে পারি দেন আই উইল বি এবেল টু কন্ট্রোল দিস কিন্তু কিছুটা মনে রাখতে হবে ভাই আমার যে এগুলো অনেক সময় আমরা তো বলি দিজ আর ন্যাচারাল ডিজাস্টার্স সামওয়ান ইজ ম্যান মেড ডিজাস্টার্স দিজ ওয়ান সামওয়ান ইজ ন্যাচারাল ডিজাস্টার্স কিন্তু ন্যাচারাল ডিজাস্টার বলে সেটার মধ্যে ম্যান ইনফ্লুয়েন্স নেই এ কথাটা কিন্তু কখনোই আমি বলবো না তাহলে মানুষের যদি ইনফ্লুয়েন্স থাকে যদি মানুষের কোনো এফেক্ট থাকে মানুষের যদি ইনভলভমেন্ট থাকে নাও ইফ উই টুগেদার আমরা সবাই মিলে যদি চাই উই ক্যান রেস্টোর আওয়ার আর্থ আমরা এত লাইভ লস থেকে বাঁচাতে পারবো থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার ফর সাচ প্রিসিশন ইন দ্য ইনফরমেশন দ্যাট ইউ হ্যাভ গিভেন আস স্যার আই হ্যাভ আ থিং টু আস্ক ইউ অ্যাজ ইন সেভারেল পার্টিসিপেন্টস আর আস্কিং ফর ইউর প্রেজেন্টেশন ইফ ইউ অ্যালাউ দেন উই কুড শেয়ার ইউর প্রেজেন্টেশন উইথ অল দ্য পার্টিসিপেন্টস is that possible sure 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 the yes okay. sure this is made for my students and uh, i love my students so they can share it they can go through it and they can take it and they can see it and they can because uh, ami jeta mone holo amar i am not uh, very much satisfied with the deliberation which i have made ami je bhabe nijeke frame korechilam that i will speak in this way ami seta ajke ektu ektu holo amar kintu i was rather ready ami sei ki bolbo kichu gun jage hoy kokhono kokhono ei rokom hoy to hoyei jay anyway sir no matter Aadke what it was, it was absolutely fantastic it was extremely inspiring for us so thank you okay, so okay. much sir thank you once again uh, now please may i request dr manush pal assistant professor and head department of geography in the shift and also the joint convener of this program to deliver the vote of thanks manush sir over to you Thank you Sohini am i audible properly yes 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 okay. but you are not visible sir where are you yes the video is on your video is uh, going on and video. off huh? it is uh, not video. always staying right click change role the submission will make present থ্যাংস on this occasion of world empowerment day 2021 i on behalf of whole geography department both day and hindi ship and the entire team of iqbc here together and on my own behalf extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all our invited speakers for gracing the occasion and sharing your findings and opinions with us I must mention our deep sense of appreciation 
for Dr. Kushagra Rajendra for his enlightening explanation on the topic, save our, ourselves, ourselves. Your thoughts have stimulated our minds and shown us a new path to protect the environment. We are grateful enough to Professor Dr. Apurvaratan Ghosh for his well-organized demonstration on the topic, Generation Restoration aims towards Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage our young generation to restore the environment on sustainable points of view. I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our patron, Mr. Molloy Ghotuk, Honorable Minister in Church, Department of Law and Public Works, and President of Governing Body, Banwari Lal Bhalutia College, Asansol. Our sincere gratitude goes to our respected principal, sir, Professor Amitabh Basu, for being the catalyst that stimulated us to do our best and standing as pillars of strength always. I also extend my sincere thanks to the IQSC coordinator and organizing secretary of this webinar, Dr. Sudipto Dash, assistant professor, Department of Mathematics, for his enormous cooperation and systematic guidance for this occasion. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very proactive and dedicated colleagues, especially Dr. Omolendu Shamunto, Assistant Professor and Head of the Department of Commerce in this city, Dr. Onimes Mondal, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, and Dr. Ornav Ganguly, Assistant Professor and Head of the PG Department, Geology of our college. I convey my sincere thanks to all of them. I am immensely thankful to the entire team of IQBC and all the committee members for their enormous cooperation for this webinar. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to all the participants to spend your valuable time even in this critical situation. Once again, I want to state that we are all most grateful to all the invited speakers and thank you all for bearing with us for almost two and half hours. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Manoj Babu, station leap got the party by platform. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. 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 And Telegram uh, app also. Please follow the uh, feedback link and uh, properly fill the feedback forms. Will generate your e certificates, and you have to uh, wait uh, for at least one week for getting your e certificates. We are not getting it. Okay. Okay. Actually, this is uh, available. I think uh, in YouTube YouTube chat box and Cisco yeah. Apex chat box also. Sure. Okay, uh, in case of, uh, you are not available, you can uh, get the feedback link in Telegram app also. Telegram? Telegram app? Yes. 